You take care of it. You feed it. You clothe it. You protect it from outside enemies. That means you put it under covering, shelter, home, housing. Come on, somebody. Is that how you take care of your body? Right? You make sure that it is not in harm's way. Lord Jesus. Yes, man, you may talk to. Look what he said in verse 29. For no one, my God, ever hated his own flesh, but what? Nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. Come on. So if I said, uh, give me peace of your flesh, I want peace of your flesh to care. You're going to give me peace. Look like them delaying. Look, go for a night in the kitchen. See, you love your flesh, you cherish it. Jesus so says, How then do you then abuse this grace? Butter and bruise. Misuse and refuse your own flesh. Come on. Come on, somebody. Are you following? He says, for we are members. We are what? We are members of his body. And of his flesh. And of what? You realize you are members of Christ's body. Of Christ's flesh. Of Christ's bones. Come on. That's why he said he loves you so much. He clothes you. He protects you. He take care of you. He feed you. He cover you. He shelter you. Because he loves you. Hello, somebody. You know what he said in the latter part of verse 28? He who loves his wife loves himself he who what loves his wife loves himself it is true that she who loves her husband loves herself it's not a one way street otherwise you won't get married both of you declared love to each other. Come on, somebody. And this should be upkept for the duration of the marriage. Are you following me here? And this love should not be on the basis because she loved me so much or he loved me so much but on the basis of the one who gave you the command you are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones does God still love your wife does God still love your husband you are members of God's body. You are members of his flesh. You are members of his bones. Is he still loving that spouse? Is he still caring for that one? Then whatever God is doing as his member of his body, and his flesh and his bones you must be doing Lord Jesus hello somebody for 
it says for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife and the two shall become one flesh this is a great mystery means it's a secret a great one a mystery is a secret <laughs> hallelujah he says but i speak concerning christ and the church come on somebody the love between christ and the church is unbreakable That's what Paul was talking about when he says, What shall separate us from the love of God? Now he say, If that love is in you, and you love your wife like that, and your wife loves you like that, nothing can tear you apart nothing but I want you to know that if the Lord keeps loving me and I don't love the Lord back he's going to cut me off that's what divorce is about I cannot keep hanging on to the fact that God loves me to keep the relationship I must love him back the people who are in hell are not there because God stopped loving them they stopped loving him and that's where persons who are called haters of God are not everybody love God the word of God said if you love God you will obey his commandments so you don't love your wife because oh your wife love you so you love your wife because God told you so God gives you the courage and the strength to sustain what he tells you to do come on somebody but if you resist fight back and complain conspire and cheat backstab and give bad report and wrong impression eventually I said eventually it is something a very valuable lesson that the Lord taught me I was there meditating on the love of God and I was meditating on the song the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can never tell it reaches to the highest stars and reaches to the lowest hell Yeah. and I was meditating on those words and said man oh love of God oh rich and pure so measureless and strong it shall forever more endure the saints an angel song it's not everybody's song the saints an angel song the saints an angel song come on somebody those who decide to take God for a puppy show treat God's word with contempt and think they can outsmart God playing with God in the background and thinking nobody can see me 
And if God even see God know, me soon tell him sorry, I'm alright again. The word of God says God is not mocked. Hello. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man saw it. <laughs> if you saw deception, the word of God says at a certain point, God will allow a strong delusion to come upon people. A strong what? Delusion to come upon you that will make you believe a lie. And that's why it says, when they say peace and safety, then come it sudden destruction upon them. They think it's all good, only to find out they think they're living in heaven. <laughs> Hello. It's a mystery. Come on now. But what does the last verse of that verse say? Nevertheless, nevertheless, somebody said nevertheless. Let each one of you, most of you, some of you, no, each one of you, he's talking about all of you, in particular, so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband come on he said she must see to it it's not the husband must beg her for it she must see to it it's not the wife must beg the husband for love he must in particular so love his own wife as himself. <sighs> Glory to God. How are you going to do that if the Spirit of God not in you? Come on. How do you love someone who doesn't love you that way it's easy to love someone who loves you that way but the word of God says God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us we were not on best behavior when he did that but he demonstrated it to us in spite of what we were doing and that's why it says you must each one in particular so love his own wife as himself this is something each one must say this is what i must do jesus said i must do the work of him that sent me come on not my will but thy will be done he says nevertheless not my will it's not about what pleases me is about what pleases the father and if i please the father the father will see to it that i am pleased hello somebody i said if i please the father the father will see to it that i am pleased ah. because the word of god says he that delights himself in the lord 
the Lord will give them the desires of their heart. Come on. Somebody praise God in this place. So the heart of being single or being married is not about bringing glory to the individual nor to the couple. Both the single and the married purpose is to bring glory to God. Is to what? And bringing glory to God sometimes may mean you're going through painful experiences, discomfort, strenuous circumstances. Come on, somebody. But if you give God the glory, God will let you live to tell the story. Hello, somebody. And because somebody else need to know that giving God the glory is worthwhile. And you are a testimony of that. He says your body is not just for food or for raiment of a sexual indulgence. He said your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It belongs to God. So he says give God glory in your body. Come on somebody. Give God glory in your body. Or oh, somebody need to say that. <laughs> oh Lord of mercy. Because this body was made to contain the glory of God. And Jesus demonstrated to his disciples when he, his body transfigured before them. The glory manifested there. He prayed before them and said, Father, give me the glory that I had with you before the world began and the word of God says and six days later Jesus carried them up on that mount and his body transfigured and when the glory showed up they could see Elijah and Moses standing with him come on somebody your body was meant to hold the glory of God hallelujah and so you don't make the devil defile it use it and abuse it for his own evil works you don't make your body become an instrument for sin an instrument for satan's use you say you are not a debtor to the flesh you owe it all to the lord somebody give god the praise in you when you know you owe it all to God, you are willing to give your body, to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's your act of worship. Come on, somebody. Every time you put this body to the service of the Lord hallelujah you are being renewed in your spirit for your real purpose is to give God glory in that body that body belongs to him from verse 18 to 20 and we're talking about your body your body belongs to the Lord your body is there to hold the glory of God. Come on, somebody. It says, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that is a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Come on, somebody. Who is in you? whom you have from God and you are not your own come on now somebody 
for you were bought at a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God come on see your body and your spirit belongs to God your body and your spirit belongs to God and it says glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's come on it belongs to God you are not your own come on the spirit which dwells in you you have from God that body is the temple of the Holy Spirit it belongs to God and your spirit that is now infused with his spirit it belongs to God and he says you must not use what belongs to God for perversion for sin for nastiness things that the devil gloats in that are shameful use it for the glory of God glorify God in your body and in your spirit glorify God in your body and in your spirit I say glorify God 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 in your body and in your spirit he you say you're not gonna do it in your spirit and your body it's not in your body alone it's also in your spirit you say glorify God in your body and in your spirit somebody glorify him in this place the world wants to tarnish and mar the body in sin and in the water the word of God says like a, a, a pig going back to the water like a dog back to the vomit but he says uh -uh, that's not for you glorify God glorify God in your body and in your spirit when you're going through the suffering you can feel the burning in your flesh but the burning in your flesh is what brings the fire in your spirit come on somebody that burning that suffering that thing you had to give up is that put the fire in your praise is that put the fire in your worship what sacrifice you make that's what energizes your passion and love for the lord when you compromise you lose that passion your worship is flaky and your praise is distant and your love and affection is phony but when you have gone through the fire you have gone through this fire of temptation and trials and have resisted and said Lord if I live I live and if I die I die but I'm gonna serve you I'm gonna serve the Lord anyhow I'm gonna serve him whether my husband is serving him or not I'm gonna serve him whether my wife is serving him or not I'm gonna serve him whether I get married or I don't get married I'm gonna serve him anyhow that's when the fragrance of true worship starts to blaze before the Lord that's when the Lord comes down and inhabits dwells 
in the praises of his people and i don't care whether you live in a mansion or a two-bit zinc board of house when the presence of god come down in your room it's better than any palace that's why david said in the presence of the lord there is fullness don't care what the pressure of life made upon you there's a joy that comes up in your spirit when you're in that presence and many have been staying far from it they're allowing the cares of the world to choke their faith they don't have that joy anymore but you better get back in that closet get back in that war room and start to worship your way back into the presence of god like the woman with that alabaster box that wiggled her way into that room and got at jesus feet before anybody had a chance to debate question or stop her because she had a mission that i'm gonna worship him tonight i don't care what they say about me i don't care who don't like me i don't care who was with me or who's not with me in the room my attention and focus ah jesus is on the lord and in him i'm gonna meditate day and night hallelujah and when you start to worship and love the lord like that you can love anybody but until you get in that presence woo, hallelujah you're just a skeptic a scoffer and a mocker and a big pretender and a hypocrite but god wants you to be connected in him as david said in him you move Paul said in him we move and we breathe and we have our being when he gets into your being whatever the devil sowed in you got to flush out yeah. I said whatever the pain or the hurt or the abuse the spirit and the presence of the Lord will flush it out of you Whoa. the pipeline will be clear again to receive clear transmission and deposit from the lord and out of your belly says shall flow rivers of living waters everywhere you go life is gonna be around you things are gonna spring up things are gonna shoot up things are going to become fruitful because rivers not bitter water not sour water not criticism and backbiting and naysaying and this no look good and that no look good me no feel a 19 again and the what me not something wrong in my church if he's so heavy are you heavy because if you were with the lord even if you're in a prison cell like a paul you'd still feel him stop shoving it on somebody else because you're drinking from somebody's anointing get your own because when you're connected to the source you don't come at church looking for god you come at church with him come on somebody but many love to push blame on somebody else man knows say there's something wrong that's why many fights of the words when they couldn't feel god you never they feel him from morning hallelujah you need to come feeling him come with him and say come on let us exalt the name of the lord together let us magnify the lord oh magnify the lord with me hallelujah you need to bring that kind of glory in the house 
that kind of glory in the bedroom that kind of glory at the workplace that kind of glory in your family that kind of glory amongst your friends my god my god and because you're missing out your eyes your focus is on the wrong things you are missing out on that glory moment you are missing out on it years of the world is weighing you down every time someone sit and hear you talk pure cares coming out your mouth cares and cares and more cares and worries and anxiety and fear you lack faith because you lack the presence of God when the presence of God in your man, faith is bubbling, expectation is bubbling, good things are coming out of your mouth. For it says, out of the good treasures of a man's heart, he bring forth good things. Hello, somebody. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And you know I can't be here sitting up talking about myself and my kids. I got to give God some. Jesus hallelujah and you got you ain't have nothing to offer on the table until you really know to praise God when you know to praise him then you can bring something good to the table and everybody can eat and leave and they won't have running belly from eating with you hello somebody they will understand that their faith is being established because they're hearing words that minister grace to the hearers come on somebody that's why that's why a news carrier can't find me as no good company because me not encourage them someday hello somebody from they come if it's something not straight they don't come to me with it because they don't know a word me to defend word word when you stand by the word faith is gonna rise I've learned not to keep asking God to increase my faith I realize I must increase in the word obedience compliance and application of the word is what increases faith wherever faith is weak apply application of the word is weak wherever faith is weak application of the word is weak you can make excuses for it till you're dead I see empty wherever faith is weak application of the word is weak so you can quote the word till you're dead if you don't believe in it and apply it it's not doing nothing for you you just sound like a recorder a record scratch stuck at one place playing but it's not going anywhere because you got to get to that place of faith come on somebody i say you got to get to that level of faith so if you hear your spouse talking negative you know back up negative on it and then it both of you become negative and both of the players i mean negative cap and negative a fire But when the positive is there, it regulates the current. It shifts that negative force into a different direction. Hello, somebody. And utilize it for the glory of God. Hello. He said, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Glorify God in your in your body and in your spirit man if you decide to do that you're going to get some testimony you see you're going to get some breakthrough you see but you've got to be willing to sacrifice to put that body through some discipline hello you got to put that body through some discipline in the word refuse 
to engage in certain things. Refuse. And the power of God is going to show up. And people are going to wonder how you do it. How comes things that work for you, sir? How you come through so good? Because you are allowing the challenges and difficulties of life to cook and to char you into a chosen vessel fit for the Lord's use. Hello, you are not running from trouble. You are proving God in your trouble. And God say anybody walk like that have to see my glory. I don't know if you're willing to take it that level. But I tell you, if you take it to that level, it's going to be a new life for you. It's what is called eternal life. It's what is called the life of God in Christ. It's the life of the kingdom operating in you. And he said, if you step into that way, my God, you will never, 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 never be the same again. Somebody give him the praise in here. You're going to pray a prayer. And I tell you, I want to say something to you singles that you are already married if you are in the Lord. And your husband, your first husband is Christ. And if you are faithful to him, you will have a great marriage no matter what the person and things that are happening around you god will make it build good for you hello somebody so you've got to make sure there's nothing in your heart offense and bitterness and strife and envy hallelujah unforgiveness that's residing in you it must be evicted Come on, somebody. So are you ready here tonight? So both the married and the single, we are praying a prayer like the married because we understand our true position. Hello, somebody. Say, Father, Father in heaven, I pray that you will deliver us from self-centeredness. Grant us a servant's heart I choose to forgive and bless them forgive us from hardness of hearts we repent in the name of Jesus father in the name of Jesus I bind the work of Satan from my marriage the enemy would love nothing more than to destroy our marriage. I ask you to stop his work in our lives and destroy his attacks against our marriage. Cancel all satanic assignments over my marriage. Lord, dissolve and render to naught every evil counsel fashioned against my home and marriage I bind every spirit of Ahab Jezebel strife and home wreckers in the name of Jesus Father please open our eyes so that we may be established in your kingdom and you will reign as lord in our lives as our covering lord we ask you to convict and deal with any unconfessed sins 
in our lives. Enable us to deal with any sin that is hindering our relationship. Father, I plead that we will speak the truth to one another in love. Help us to honestly share our feelings without being arrogant or spiteful. Through love and honesty, enable us to work out our differences. We lose, we lose the spirit of forgiveness, love and patience, tenderheartedness, sound mind into us in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for a spirit of agape love to manifest itself in us in this marriage in Jesus name we take authority and bind all bitterness wrath, anger clamor and slander pointing the finger blame game along with every form of malice let every evil spiritual marriage with spirit husband or wife be divorced stolen love he doesn't care she doesn't care spirit remove them from us in the name of Jesus we break all curses of divorce and separation of ourselves and this marriage father I plead that you will bring us into more intimate relations with you grant us a hunger in our soul for you we cancel all assignments of being defensive and self-righteous about the problems in our marriage and your conviction concerning these things grant that we would humbly accept your conviction and will change as you deal with us father I ask that you will deal with my and any past problems in our life that is causing trouble now your word declares that you heal the broken hearted and that you bind up their wounds in the name of Jesus I ask you to be true hallelujah to your word and heal the emotional wounds and baggages that we have in our lives father i pray that you would rekindle passion and desire between us i ask you to bless our relationship and help us to rejoice in it i pray that we'll be satisfied and exhilarated with each other's love Lord Jesus you have declared that what therefore God has joined together let no man separate you have declared the will of the Father it is the will of the Father for marriages to be for a lifetime you desire one man to be with one woman for life this is your heart's desire because this is your heart's desire I plead with you to save and to strengthen my marriage in the name of Jesus come on give God the praise you believe and receive it give God a real hallelujah praise 
I don't care what it feel like. Change is coming. Shackles are broken. Burdens are lifted. Serpents are falling. Demons are being crushed under your feet. Hey! That's right now in the heavenlies. Demonic sanctions. Demonic chanting and reverberations are being destroyed. Back to the camp of the enemy. Every generational curse. Aha. Every ancestral spirits. Disembodied spirits. Demonic weddings. Demonic husbands and wives. That are filtering into your marriage. Demonic children. Makoroboshanda. Demonic feast. Demonic covenants. Be broken. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right <laughs> now. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. Where the raisers are in the house. Woo. Raise up a standard law in this house and in the house of fire all over this nation. Change the report. Change the report, Lord. Over this nation. Change the report. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let family structures be once renewed and brought in alignment with your word. Restore morality. Sound mind. Healthy relationships and mentality in this nation. Flood this place with your presence. Let it be as a hub that flows into every ears and corners of this nation now. Let it spring up as a fountain, Lord. And water your people, water this nation. Hallelujah. Let it flood your people. Hallelujah. And let their hearts be turned back to you, God. Let it be turned back to you. Every wayward spirit. Every backsliding spirit. Every resentful spirit. Contentious spirit. Nagging spirit. Tormenting spirits. Ha ha. Lewd spirits. Idolatrous spirits, adulterous spirits. We send it back. We command them to leave this island. We command them to leave this island. Jamaica will get a new name. We'll have a new report. The sons and daughters of God are arising to take their place. And good report must come. You said by faith the elders obtain, Lord. A good report. <laughs> and we claim a good report over this nation. A good report over marriages. Good report over home life and family life. Good report over broken homes. And they will come back together. There will be healing and reconciliation. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. He put it in your hands, Lord. You trusted in your care. You believe it's already done. Even now. Even now. 
Yes, Lord. Draw the reins. Restrain the works of Satan. Destroy it now, Lord. For this purpose, Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. Cause what he meant for evil <laughs> to be turned around for good. We are sin abound. Let grace much more abound, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody, thank him right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Just give him the thanks. Give him the thanks. Give him the thanks. Give him the thanks. You don't know how much he's doing, but give him the thanks. You don't see it all, but give him the thanks. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall be saved. Hallelujah. Woo! It's turning around. Ha 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 ha. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I said it's turning around. Hallelujah. We command the atmosphere to be lined up with the kingdom of God. And that every person come in contact will sense a shift. And it will become like wildfire. It will become contagious through this nation. It will spread from this house across the whole nation. Hallelujah. Every person we come in contact with, we send something different and leave with something different to deposit to someone else. Hallelujah. I wonder if somebody know what I'm talking about. Here. <laughs> Glory to God. This word is going to change the nations as the as they give God the glory, as they glorify God with the body, in the body and in the spirit. Hallelujah. Great change is gonna take place. The devil can't stop it. It's already done. It's already done. We are just agreeing with God already purposed it. And we are just agreeing with God. I say we are just agreeing with God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Does anybody have a genuine praise in the house? <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Whoa. Hallelujah. Glory to God.